What's up everybody? It's Travis here from Travis.media. So I happened to be looking the other day through the 2021 Stack Overflow survey and I came across an interesting statistic that got me thinking. So this graph here is basically the ages of developers that they surveyed. I don't know how many people they surveyed and I'm sure there's more to it than this. But in their findings, these are the ages of developers in 2021. And if you do the math here, you'll see that 83% of developers fall within this 18 to 44 age range. Now, the biggest range is 25 to 34 years old. Um, 18 to 24 is a big one, too. Even 35 to 44 is not bad. And that's where I fall in. I'm about the middle of that. There's 18% of us. But as soon as you get to 45 and you get in, in that 45 to 54-year-old bracket, there's only 6%. Now again, I don't know who they surveyed and whether there's some outside things that skewed this, but in general, we're seeing 6% of developers in this survey, 45 to 54. And to me, that's a big drop off. We got 18% and then all of a sudden we have 6%. Why the drop off? Did they stop coding? What's gonna happen to you when you reach that age? Are you gonna be part of the 6%? I got about five years to figure it out. Right now, I think I'm doing okay. I'm keeping up with the young folks. But maybe in five years, there will be more issues that I'm not thinking about. And I think it's an important question in the earlier in your career that you consider it, the better. So let's talk about that today. All right, so before we get started, if you haven't seen one of my videos before, I'm that old guy in the statistics there. I started coding at 34 and completely changed careers, and this YouTube channel has been my way of sharing that journey. If this interests you at all, consider hitting that subscribe button below. So a lot of people will look at this graph and say, hey, it's ageism, okay? People are in their job, they end up getting booted out because they get too old, they can't compete with 20-somethings, or they lose their job and they try to get another one and people just aren't hiring them. And I think there's some truth to that, and I don't wanna make this video about ageism because I have my own opinions about that. I'll do a separate video sometime. But I do believe that aging in the tech industry has more to do with interests and seasons than it does skill level. And what I mean by that is if I'm at work, you know, I'm 40 years old, if I'm at work and I'm working with a bunch of 20 somethings, you know, they're 22, 23, that don't have as much responsibility or life that I have going on. If one of them says, hey, we need to finish this tonight, let's all lean in, let's go get some pizza and lean in and try to work till eight, nine o'clock and knock this thing out. And if everybody goes, yeah, that's great, man, let's, they don't have as much responsibility. I got kids, I got a wife, I got other things going on. I'm at a later season in life. That's what I mean by seasons. And I'm sorry guys, I can't lean in with you. I got things to do. So there's that conflict there. You got these young people that have great lives too. They have things going on, but they don't have as much responsibility as someone who's 20 years older. So that's a conflict. And what I mean about interests is that some people just, they like coding, but their interests shift to different places. And I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. I'm gonna talk about some other possible positions that you could switch into and maybe people are switching into that puts this number at 6%. Now, another obvious thing that happens is that developers move up. They move into senior roles or like tech leads or something like that, but that's still coding and I would think that would still fall in this survey. And also another obvious place is a lot of developers move into management. They get older and they develop the skill at managing developers, overseeing the bigger picture. And that's what I kind of mean by stop coding. Like senior developers are still coding, management, they kind of stop coding to take on that bigger picture. And of course, they don't stop coding completely or ditch that skill. It's just not what they do in their day to day. And then another factor, of course, is people just quitting coding. Maybe they get burnout or maybe they just don't like it and they go and they do something else. But what I want to discuss in this video is there are other alternatives that developers could shift to. I mean, like I said, I got five years before I'm in the 6% bracket. I may continue coding. I may not but there are other alternatives out there for older developers aside from just management. And here are five. Number one, consulting. I think this is the route that I'm gonna go. I have this weird goal that most people don't have. A lot of developers, they wanna code, they wanna get really good, move up to a senior position, and then just keep moving up the chain, just make lots of money, just be super successful. I have kind of the opposite. Like I'm a developer and I love to develop. Maybe I'll move into a senior position or something, but I'm not interested in management. As I get older, I actually want to do less work and have less stress. And I think one way to do that is consulting. And I think it gives you the most freedom and bang for the buck. And the one thing you need to do to become a consultant is to become an expert in something. Maybe, maybe it's being an AWS, Azure, or Kubernetes architect. 
where people can call you in to optimize or build out their environment. Maybe you're an expert in like automated pipelines for developers, so you can appeal to startups, maybe jump in there and set up automated pipelines for them, maybe a penetration tester, or maybe a very specific service like AWS Amplify, HashiCorp Vault, something like that. Being an expert in one thing where people say, hey, we need an expert in this field, let's bring in this guy. And then you can be that consultant, you can charge big rates, and you work less. Or you work in seasons. Maybe you work more for like a month and then you get some time off before you have to do the next engagement. Another route in number two is product management. According to HubSpot, a product manager is a professional who helps manage the research, design, testing, and go-to market strategy of a product, software, or service. Product managers liaise with their company's engineering, user design, marketing, and sales teams to successfully take a product from development to launch. It's a pretty good definition. It's the bigger picture. It's not just developers. It's sales. It's research. It's customer input, design. And it's not building the product, but overseeing the success of it. So maybe you love the product that you've been building for years and you want everybody to use it. And I think that's a good route for a lot of people. And of course, it's those extra skills that you've learned over the years that younger developers don't have that give you the edge up in these positions. Number three, sales. Maybe your interest has changed from building apps to telling everyone about them. You love the products and you wanna see the world adopt it. Number four, project management. I think a lot of people go this route because you understand developers. I mean, you used to be one. Why not be the one to manage the projects that developers are on and assure the success of it? You still solve problems, just different ones. You discover tasks that need to be done, see that they're accounted for, and try to predict its timeline. You delegate instead of do. The developers are doing, you're delegating. And number five, developer relations. Now this is a fairly new position, and it's big. Like I was trying to figure out a good definition for it, and I just can't. It's a massive field, and I think it's kind of still being developed. But essentially it's building relationships with developer communities. It's helping connect your product or mission with communities of developers. And there are subsets like the developer advocate, developer evangelist, uh, experience, marketing. There's subsets within that too. So there's a wide enough field for you to find your place in it. And I've seen a lot of developers get into that role and just love it. So those are five alternatives. That may be where some of these people are going. So what age should you stop coding professionally? Because nobody really stops as a hobby, right? Well, according to Stack Overflow, it's downtrending after 34. Doesn't mean you have to stop though. Of course, you can continue coding as long as you're in demand and as long as people will keep you at their job and people see you as valuable. You may be 45, you may be 50, you may be 60 still coding and being successful and that's wonderful. Many of us hope to make it there, but many of us are gonna struggle along the way as we get older. But again, as I said, I think it's interests and seasons that pull people out of coding and put them in places like management, consulting, dev relations, things like that. And they're great alternatives. Whatever path you choose, it's your call, of course, but be sure to keep it in mind as you progress throughout your career so that you'll be prepared when you hit that 6% age range. So hey, let's discuss it below. What age do you think developers should stop coding? How do you plan to shift your career or do you even plan to do that? Do you plan to code forever? Do you plan to shift into something else? Whatever it is, I'd love to know below and I'd love to start a good discussion on it. So if you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.